Hello people, welcome back again. We have another high bike fly on repair video. Today's video is about replacing the motor and doing it properly. So the tools required, or I will be using is a um, ratchet set there, Allen key, probably the screwdriver, some part tool grease and a torque wrench, which is one of the top top peak top wrench. Okay, a decent one. And that is the uh, high performance grease what I will be using. Um, so that's that. So first thing first is the battery's already been taken out before. Uh, obviously, you know how if you own one of them, you know how to take the battery out. Battery needs to be, you know, um, taken out just so that it, it sort of takes the weight, some of the weight off, so you can turn the bike upside down like this. Uh, I do have a stand, but I'd prefer to work on the bike when it comes to things like this. Um, about having the bike tilted like the way I have done it. I've used some books to lever, uh, well, I should say raise the, the handle, uh, the front end of the bike so that it's not sort of touching the, uh, the floors, not catching the display. Otherwise, you can very easily damage that. Furthermore, the stuffs are here. Let me sort of get a good go. Stuffs are here. Those, those are sort of, I've, I've put the book further away so it's not catching that. And same on this side, but this side, you've got to be absolutely critical that the remote control is not in contact with the book because the button that you press will be damaged there's no doubt about that okay so without delay let's crack on with this okay so first thing first is that the battery cover will come away uh, put that to the side um, secondly this is not done in a in a very specific order but i'll be doing it at my own sort of discretion really so if you can sort of do things that your way then brilliant do it so what i would suggest and one one other thing i forgot to mention is the tool for for this because obviously i've got to swap out the chain ring which i have here so first thing first i'm going to remove this chain guide now remember there's two washers on the back if they drop if they do pop out then then sort of find them and put them back in okay so there's two washers there Two little washers goes here, okay, and one behind this, I believe. Let me just sort of confirm that. Yes, there is one behind, okay. So there's three washers in total, one, one behind here, and two seats in, in this gap, okay. So don't, don't lose them. Okay, and this would be the, uh, the ultimate tool, all right. A good part of 80 quid um, that is the tool that's uh, required to remove the chain ring so because the pedals are out I'm going to temporarily put a pedal in just to give me that bit of leverage okay so I'll put this I'll put one on the other side now considering that these are no good to me I'm still going to sort of use one just to give that extra bit of lever so there you have it and then I can attach the actual tool all right let's sort of just go easy easy Nice and gentle, no rush. Let the thing come off. And that's that, we'll keep that too. Okay, now the thing to remember that this has an O-ring. All right, sometimes this O-ring can snap. Um, ideally, you wanna change that O-ring when you're servicing, having the bike serviced. Um, and most of your uh, workshop the ID for the O-ring is 41 millimeter. The outside diameter, when you measure it, is 44 millimeter. And the actual thickness of the O-ring is 1.5 millimeter. That's what you need. What I'm going to do is I should have taken the chain off. So let me engage the uh, locking for the actual rear derailleur. Okay, so the chain is now slapped. Okay gently drop the chain this will just pop out with ease okay that will be a four millimeter so i can take the uh, cover off okay so again i need to make sure that you get in everything what i'm doing all right so let's uh... now one of the things i've come across with this bike is that 
when, when I refit this, I'll, I'll show you how this needs to be sort of pushed back, especially these two screws. Them two screws needs to be, you, you'll have to hold this and press it. See that little movement? Let me just see if I can get that movement. See that movement on the cover? Okay, you need to keep it that way and same pressure on that way. When you, otherwise your battery cover won't see it properly and it, it, it'll make a squeaking noise when you're out about. Furthermore, to reduce the squeaking noise, uh, apply some decent grease around these edges because this is the edges where after, after you've ridden the bike for a while, it starts squeaking. So that's something to sort of remember. Okay, so let's continue on doing these. couldn't find a torque setting for these so these will be done based on feel now don't over tighten them because it's plastic you will crack the plastic it is, it is tough plastic but it will you will crack it there's no doubt about that two bolts okay first thing first these two bolts needs to come off okay so what I will be using is a Starkey. Let me see what size it is. I'm not quite sure. It's a T40, if I'm not mistaken. Is it T40? It should be a T40. It is a T40. Yes. You will hear it clicking when you when so on on time anti-clockwise. To be dead honest with you, this was left a. Let's just look. Quick. Yeah, there was a little click, but you couldn't hear. That should have been a little bit louder. These washers is. It's recommended by High Bike that every time you remove the nuts and bolts, you replace these two washers. The trouble is that I don't know where to get source these washers from. So I've made an inquiry with the bike shop to see if they can sort of source these washers for me. I will be going to Francis and Kirk um, and see if, they, if, they, if they've got any. Now, the thing to remember is that they're in a specific orientation inside this uh, bolt. Okay, so the fine, fine threaded is on the outer side of the both both as you can see there now unfortunately this this insta 360 camera is absolutely rubbish when it comes to close-up shots okay so as i repeat the fine fine little marks are on the outer side so this side okay and the one that has less mark is in between so this that side that side's got less little indent or marking a groove whatever you want to call it same as here so they are seated together and the ones that's fine are on the outer side like that okay so don't don't make mistakes and put them back wrongly right so when you when you pull the screw the bolt out just make sure you don't you don't sort of uh, make drop them out right so let's sort of yeah that's tight so let me okay yeah those little indents uh, or, or the grooves, I should say, on the washers are, are to hold the bolt in place so it doesn't sort of slacken, you know, itself because a lot of stress goes through that motor. All right. Equally and just gently pull away the pull out the motor, right? Just gently, go easy, right? Because you don't want to be damaging the connector, nor you want to be damaging this uh, these pins on the motor. These pins, okay? It's absolutely critical that you pay attention to that. So. One other tip while I'm doing this, okay, that when you take the motor out for, or you, you're having the motor serviced, or you're having some work done, your lights have failed, you're rewiring the loom, or your dropper post not working properly, something's gone wrong and, and somebody's taking the motor out. And when you put the motor back in, all of a sudden you'll notice that the dropper post is no longer working. You think, hey, it was all working before, well, why is it not working? Because, I should say this is because the this cable here is for your dropper post this one that okay so this needs to be pressed in in a in a in a, in, a, in like this in a correct manner for some funny reason that if this if this suffers any abnormal stress the dropper post stops working so what i would do ask you to do is pull the motor out make sure that this is seated properly then push it back in again and happy days I will be talking to you about this O-ring business because that O-ring needs to be swapped out from this to the other one. I'm not quite sure about the diameter, which I will find out and keep you updated. Um, but uh, there is an O-ring that sort of falls off when you take the motor away 
and reseat another one or, or it doesn't seat properly because it's it, it's an o-ring it's not a shape of a, a rectangular and the, this the the actual seal here the fitting here let me grab the motor that's the motor right okay the o-ring is actually already seated but i've used a very special glue when I say glue, it's a silicon type of glue. You can take this O-ring off and I'll show you I'm going to do that very shortly. So let's just do things one, one, one thing at a time. All right. Okay. So this, at this stage, I'll be removing this O-ring from the motor. So let me put my way a little bit from the bike and sort of get this my lab right and gently just be careful that you don't damage the o-ring just gently lift away the o-ring there you go that's done type of glue what I've used I'm so glue it is it's uh, may have applied it a little bit too much this time around so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the edges out and try and assist it to be now ideally you want to refresh this o-ring what I'm going to do is I'm gonna try and establish what the size of this see what's happening these these things are you know, they're not like super glue. Never ever use super glue on things like this. I'd, I'd, I'd urge you not to do that. Absolutely no, no. Look, I can reuse this, right? But ideally on a servicing level, no, it's not recommended to do that, right? So the idea is that, look, the shape of this, right? So when you when you seat this, when you seat this, it might sit, it might stay seated because of the, the, the adhesive that's already on there, right? But when you do this, it, look, look what happens. It comes away, right? So when, when, when you're putting it on, how, how do you expect this to be seated in the place, right? When you put in the motor on? This is what stops all the water and all the moisture and everything, you know, uh, pe penetrating into the motor. This is what seals it between the frame and the motor, this O-ring. So it's absolutely critical that this is seated properly, right? So now the question is that, what's the what's the what's the actual size of this o-ring because this will be a serviceable part that's will be required let's see what the diameter of this o-ring is it's showing it as 1.3 so that would be about one i would stick to 1.5 mil yeah definitely 1.5 mil that's the thickness of it now the difficulty is now to try and establish what the actual uh, ID and, and the uh, outer diameter is. Right, so what I've actually done is, I can't work out, I haven't got a, a funnel of some sort so to try and sort of put that on, on and try and figure out what the outer di diameter of the O-ring is. So what I've done is I've, I've taken a, a measurement or, or a template of, of, of the length of the actual O-ring and I will update you on this uh, some other time. Um, because this could be a little bit of a, a rabbit hole to hell, but I will figure it out eventually. So I'll, I'll grab this out, pull this out anyway. It's nicely seated, but at least I know the length of it. Major bit is the seat in this uh, thing. So let me, this old ring. So let me show you how I do that. Okay, let's get a close, closer view on what I'm doing. So you can see, all right, let's grab that old ring. Let's grab that little, little Glue. What I'm using the teeth. This is used for mobile, mobile screen assemblies and things like that. Just see it all that. So that's that. And I did sort of have a screwdriver. Just going to gently make sure that nothing falls in there. Gently take away any edges or anything that's there. Be careful they don't drop anything in that. Right, so what I'm going to do now is ideally you want to wet this O-ring uh, with some rubber. Let me go, let me see if I've got this top uh, off Amazon. It's a silicon, it's a silicon uh, grease. 
right but then i've got to be careful that i don't utilize grease see it's a it's a cash 21 because if you put grease on this o-ring you won't be able to see the glue won't adhere well this 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 silicon type glue won't adhere to the o-ring and the metal groove here so which means that you're, you're kind of a situation where so what i might do is i might sort of uh, apply the uh, silicon on the top right so i'm just applying a little bit tiny amount okay just on the corners this is where it's slipping out see just a tiny little line right okay and this stuff sets quite you know quite quickly i'm gonna have to go and take the gloves off right so and just need to hold it down for a little bit Some of you are thinking that's just a two minute job. It never is, nothing is two minute job. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but that's just the way things are. Especially when you're working with, oh, as I repeat this. So I'm gonna hold it in place for about 30 second, say about a minute maximum. It's already, look, it's already sort of working its way in. So let's just, let's just keep it held for a bit longer. No, so let's just keep it in position for a bit longer. Not going to press it, but no, just just gently holding it in its place while the this, this uh, glue is sort of uh, activating itself and holding the O ring in place. Let's break away any. So there you go. That's seated. It's done in less than a minute. Hopefully, I think so. But that I'm going to keep that there. Just keep an eye on it. And apply a bit of grease on this contact. I don't know why there was a bit of a grease originally came out of factory, so I will put a bit of grease around that this uh, this thing before seating the motor in place. No idea why they do that. So, but if it's an indicator of uh, some sort to show that if the motor's been out or whatever, I don't know. So I couldn't say that. So uh, yep, yeah, there we have it. So without. They're like that's that's staying where it is okay but i did say i'm going to apply a bit of this grease um so just a gentle amount around the edges so that it makes it watertight just a tiny tiny little all you're doing is just wetting the surface of it you're not going crazy crazy with it All right and I'm quite satisfied with that so let me grab a rug and clean it and um, yes I know that this isn't a, a five minute video showing everything the whole process if I did this whole process without video shooting <laughs> you're talking very quick very quickly that I'd get around and get it sorted but because of all these messing around that's why it's taken however if you want to learn something you're gonna to have to be patient so you're gonna to have to have patience i should say so and and to do things properly without damaging things so we're quite happy this is prepared we're quite happy that this is also fine there's nothing else to do here so let me raise this a little bit more and you can get a better view of what i'm doing move all these two out of sight Okay, the connectors there. Now you need to be very careful when you're installing this because this is where you can easily damage those pins and things like that. So what I do is position the motor with your two bolts, line it up, make sure it's equal as you drop it, it's, it's, it's balance, it's, it, the height is same, lean over near to the connector and just keep an eye on the connector and the the the, the male and the female connectors are sort of uh meeting in one thing you do not drop the motor because it is a heavy item and gently gently be gentle with it and it just drops in its place 
that's it. That's all you need to be careful with that because as soon as you drop it, it's a heavy item. So grip it well and dropping it in its place gently. So that's that's clicked in its place beautifully, right? So let me sort of just make sure that this it is here. Now, one thing I would recommend you doing is that there is something that's obstructing one side of the motor going in for some reason. So this is where this dropper test tissue comes into place, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a play around with this dropper post and make sure that that dropper post is working, right? But before doing that, I need to secure the motor. Now, ideally, I've not seen any grease on them. So I don't know whether it's a good idea to put them on, but supposedly no, no harm in putting a bit of anti-seize grease. Um, only a tiny amount, you don't have to go crazy with it. That's all I'm doing, it's just a tiny little thingy. I can't see that doing any harm to the frame, other than just preventing it from corrosion and things like that. So let's just put them in its places and start fastening them. Okay. See, this is where a lot of time goes into when people, you know, editing. Okay, so I'm going to do one bit one side at a time. I'm not just going to tighten one side fully and then come into the next side. I'm going to go in turns and do that. Now, I did, I worked on another fly on and the talking that was done on these bolts were absolutely crazy. I think it was in the 50 Newton meters, 50 Newton meters of range that they put on. The manufacturer's recommendation for the torque setting for these bolts are 18, 1, 8, 18 Newton meters, not 40 and not 50. It's 18. You, you throw this and you're looking, you know, you're in some serious trouble because you've damaged the frame. You know, these, these, you know, you'll have to find somebody who can, who can sort of re-thread the frame. Uh, so this is how critical it is that you do not sort of put excessive uh, torque on them. But let me do the dropper post test. Make sure that the dropper post bike is dropping. So all I'm going to do is just turn that lever on the dropper post and push the bike up and down just to see if 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 the if the dropper post is actually functioning. Okay, so it is dropping. So let me sort of lift the bike and see if the dropper post. Yes, so it is working. So I'm quite happy to continue with the talking up the motor. So let's grab uh, my torque wrench. Now, ideally, the way I do things is, is I don't torque it up to 18 Newton meters straight away. I do bit at a time. So I'll set an example, okay? So this is set to 18. I'm gonna drop it to about, say, 10. Let's just do it in, in, in round numbers, okay? So let's do 10 Newton meters. That's opening, sorry, wrong way. So it's, that's not reached 10, but I'm still going to swap over the sides. 10 Newton meters. Okay, I'm just going to wait for a moment. Okay, so that's 10. I'm going to now take it, bump it up to say 14. I'll oh, say 15. Okay, I'll bump it up to 15. And then the last one will be 18. So that's 15 Newton meters. 15, not 50. Yep. Yeah. Just go easy with the Tox wrench. Gently. Yep, yeah, so that's 15. Wait for a moment. And then we'll do the final talking. Okay, yeah, quite happy to continue now. So I will go 15, 16, 17, 18. Whoops, almost knocked off the camera. And we'll do the final. 
make sure that that is right. Okay, so let's just confirm. Yep, 18. 18 on that side. Brilliant. What an achievement it has been. Okay, so put these back in place. Right, so now it's pretty, it's just reversing everything. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to put the chain ring on. Right, so ideally you, you would want to apply a little bit of grease on that, uh, around that edge. So, so we can grease, so let's, let's sort of apply gently, apply a little bit over that. Right, let's just put that. I think we're quite satisfied with that. Okay, so let's see the uh, chain ring back on. All right. Okay. So that's 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 on there beautifully. Okay, look. Now it will be putting this back on. That, that is already greased up anyway, so I'm not going to sort of refresh and it's got an O-ring as well, fresh O-ring. So, nice and gently, put it in. Well, what the crap that is, let's just get shut the back a little. Okay. Get shut of that, okay, it must have picked it off the, from the ground. You're going anti-clockwise. I will need to leave her in with that uh, pedal. Then, so I'll have to stick that player's pedal back in. To give me that bit of a leverage so I can... Okay, there we go. So I'm not going to talk it with this, obviously, but uh, let me just tighten it up a little bit. So then I can just gently, you do not want to be cross-threading this. Just gently, right? So it's getting tight. Now I'm going to use my toys. 30 newton meters that you talk this up to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk it up to 20 first and then sort of uh, go for the higher talking. So first, first is, okay. Okay, so that's 20, 21. So let's reset this, put it to 30. That's the spec. Back to torque setting for this ring. Oops, I keep on knocking this camera up. Um, make sure that's right. Yep, okay, that is still right. So let's put that in this position. Let me get the pedal up here a little bit so I can have a bit more leverage. Yep, so that's, that's beeped. And I'm quite happy. All right, that's beeped. I'm not going to confirm it there's no need to do that um, all right so quite happy with that so now um, we, I'll put the wheel and the chain everything else back on pro I could do with the wheel and the chain but uh, suppose I could put this cover back on so these are the longer ones and those are the shorter ones shorter one so let's sort of do that okay just use the allen key feed them in gently just, sorry just checking that you're in the view okay don't tighten them up yet because Remember what I said to you that the, you need to just these screws and the covering needs to be pressed further that way, just so that your battery cover seats properly. Otherwise, it'll be it won't be sticking out, but it, it just won't sort of seat properly. You'll have to see it to understand it, you know. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to 
torque these two up first before going onto them. I'm going to press onto the cover. What I do, let's just put the other one on. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to press onto this. So I'm holding and pushing it that way. And then I'm tightening the screws. And you do that at feel. I don't remember seeing any torque settings for them. Okay, so that's done. And the same with that one. It's done with feel. I'm not doing it through this with a long run because I'll have more leverage and there's more chances that I can snap the plastic okay so by doing it this way i'm not going to sort of over tighten and crack the plastic right and now i can tighten these two up should you want to put lock tight maybe not okay i'm quite happy with that those are done beautifully put back on that chain and the chain Right, so let's put the chain back in its place. Nice and gently. I'm going to unlock this uh, chain, uh, the rear derailleur, just to sort of leave that thing. Um, now the chain guide. Remember what I've said about these two washers. Don't misplace them. Don't drop them. If they do pop out, don't worry about it. Just find them and put them back in. We'll be doing another video on uh, how to install uh, aftermarket calip uh, uh, discs. Right, that's not good. Let's sort of uh, lock that derailleur in place. Okay, let's don't go in there. That's aftermarket. Um, I mean, whole floating disc on the high back flying. It's a bit tricky because of the speed sensor. But to uh, have that uh, kind of overcome this with a, with a little tweak, so I will share that with yourself. There you go, so that stretches the chain. I can grab that chain guide, don't drop these washers, and this should be an easy fix. There you go. Right, again, don't rush, don't. Oh, I know round anything be careful now this is torqued i believe so with feel again so that's as far as it goes with it okay brilliant why is it doing that for that's because the chain is stuck stupid chain slacken that okay that's better and this goes in Again, the shaft, rear shaft for the wheel is 11 newton meters and it's written on the actual shaft itself. So don't go crazy with it again. Right, and that is it, I believe. Chain rings on, hat on, battery motors on, everything's been talked up properly, wheels back on. Yeah, I, th I think it's been a, a great achievement. That, so that's how you install a flying TQ120 uh, motor. So the, the correct phrase is fly on, or I'll say TQ HPR 120S. So it's TQ HPR 120S motor, or engine, if you'd like to call it in a Porsche manner. So that's how it gets installed. Um, I've got some hope pedals to put on, so I'm gonna do that as a separate video. But as for now, this is it. Hope if you found this uh, video um, helpful, um, and if you don't have any ideas what you're doing with, with it, just, just take it to a bike shop. One of the persons I'd strongly recommend is Richard at eBikes or Six. Uh, he has been very helpful. Uh, go and speak to him and if you, you know, and uh, wish you all the best. Happy cycling. Take care guys. Peace. Bye bye.